On December 5th, 2001, Space Shuttle Endeavour lifted off from Pad 39A at Cape Canaveral for mission STS-108. STS-108 would bring the Expedition 4 crew to the International Space Station. Two, one. We have booster ignition and liftoff of the Space Shuttle Endeavour, pushing our goals skyward using our station in space. Houston now controlling the flight of Endeavour. Roll program. Roger roll, Endeavour. Endeavour into the roll, placing the shuttle at a heads down wings level position, the proper azimuth for the eight and a half minute ride to orbit. Thirty seconds into the flight, Endeavour's three liquid fuel main engines now throttling back in a three-step fashion to 72% of rated performance, reducing the stress on the shuttle as it breaks through the sound barrier. Endeavour already three miles downrange, four and a half miles in altitude, losing weight as it heads uphill. Endeavour Houston, go at throttle up. Endeavour copies, go at throttle up. The throttle up call from Capcom Jim Kelly acknowledged by Commander Dom Gorey aboard Endeavour. Gorey joined on the flight deck by pilot Mark Kelly, flight engineer Dan Tawney and mission specialist Linda Godwin. The Expedition 4 crew, Russian Commander Yuri Anufrienko and American flight engineers Dan Bursch and Carl Wall seated down on the mid deck. Endeavour now 10 miles downrange, 14 miles in altitude, traveling at about 2,500 miles per hour. Everything looking very good. Three good auxiliary power units, three good fuel cells, all of Endeavour's systems in excellent shape. Standing by for solid rocket booster separation. Booster officer reports good solid rocket booster separation, 33 miles downrange, 31 miles in altitude, guidance now converging, Endeavour's onboard computers commanding the main engine nozzles. The primary objective of STS-108 was to deliver supplies to and help maintain the International Space Station. To do so, it carried the Ruffello MPLM in its cargo bay with thousands of pounds of supplies for the station and its crew. On December 7, 2001, Endeavour approached the station and docked with PMA-2 on Destiny. This uh, formation with a spaceship, uh, bringing together the two probably most techno technologically advanced vehicles our country's ever produced and getting to uh, mate them together was a, was a pilot's dream come true. Um, bright golden with the, uh, with the solar rays and as we got closer uh, it was just a more spectacular view with every minute. We knew Frank was on, on the other side waiting for us. Um, here's a view Looking out the back window, you can see the station coming down at the same time as this insert. Shows us about a foot or two from docking. And, uh, and right prior to docking, we fire some jets that mates it hard, and, and uh, the latches grab hold, and we're in, in, uh, in a great config. And it took a little bit of work for uh, Linda to bring the uh, station down. Uh, folks were uh, thinking it was a pretty good time, too, and uh, gave me a clap on the back. I sure enjoyed that. After docking, the crew then entered the station and Expedition 3 crew consisting of Frank Culbertson, Mikhail Turin, and Vladimir Dusharov officially ended their 117-day residency on board the International Space Station when their custom Soyuz seat liners were transferred to Endeavour and the Expedition 4 seat liners were installed in Soyuz TM-33, 
marking the official exchange of crews. But my, my initial reaction was that the, uh, the place is just huge compared to the, compared to the orbiter. There's a lot of room uh, and it's just a, it's a marvelous facility and uh, you know, just a real state-of-the-art laboratory uh, where we're going to get some uh, incredible, uh, incredible science and uh, incredible technology out of it. And here's us uh, getting ready for our first crew photo as a crew of 10 instead of a crew of 7. Endeavour pilot Mark Kelly and mission specialist Linda Goodwin used the shuttle's robotic arm to lift the Raffello from the shuttle payload bay and berth it to the Unity Nadir node. When you move big masses on orbit, you move them pretty slow. This is the uh, MPLM here has about 6,000 pounds of stuff in it, and most of it is stuff for Expedition 4. It's experiments, uh, their food, clothing, uh, everything they need that'll last them till uh, this May when they come home. We're going to take the MPLM here, and Linda's going to uh, maneuver it exactly where it needs to be within within tenths of inches and berth it to the node. The astronauts and cosmonauts completed the transfer of over 5,000 pounds of supplies and material from Endeavour's mid-deck and from the Ruffello to the station. The transferred items included more than 850 pounds of food, 1,000 pounds of clothing and other crew provisions, 300 pounds of experiments, 800 pounds of spacewalking gear, and 600 pounds of medical equipment. In turn, the crew packed up the Raffello with items bound for a return trip to Earth. They packed uh, everything in, in this thing, and uh, the problem with uh, Dan was that we couldn't find his barcode, but after a lot of searching, <coughs> fortunately not too much searching, uh, we found it and uh, checked him off the list. On December 10, 2001, Endeavour astronauts Lisa Goodwin and Daniel Tanney completed a four-hour spacewalk to install insulation on mechanisms that rotate the International Space Station's main solar arrays. Goodwin and Tanney also performed a get-ahead task, positioning two switches on the station's exterior that would be installed on a future space shuttle mission, STS-110. The spacewalk completed a record year with 18 spacewalks conducted, 12 originating from the shuttle and six from the station. On the, uh, when we were completed with that SASA shroud, we uh, actually went to another place on the station to drop off some tools for uh, not the next flight, but the flight after that in April. And uh, since we had that uh, opportunity, that ride again, we uh, took advantage of the view. We took as many pictures as we could uh, on the view. At this moment, although I'm disappointed that it didn't turn on in the video, we're right over Houston and that was one of the most memorable things on this flight is looking down at Houston. Um, we came back to the uh, orbiter and you can see the airlock there and we were done with our EVA. A formal change of command ceremony took place on the 13th of December as Expedition 4 crew consisting of Yuri Franco, Carl Waltz, and Daniel Bursch began its residency, and Expedition 3 ended theirs. Before undocking from the station, the crew returned the Ruffello to the shuttle payload bay and prepared to leave. It takes a lot of precision to put it back in. You'll get a view here that shows it's a pretty tight fit. But he uh, put it in with great finesse, and I'm pretty sure when they got it back and looked at it, they didn't see any scratch marks or scuff marks on the side. He did a really good job. Flight controllers planned slight changes to Endeavour's departure from the station, which would occur on the 15th of December 2001, allowing time for small RCS jet firings that would boost the station's orbit. The reason for the boost was the prediction of a spent Russian rocket stage launched in the 1970s which would pass within three miles of the station if Endeavour did not perform the engine firing. But with the shuttle reboost, the station was predicted to pass more than 40 miles away from the debris. Because the scheduled reboost used additional propellant, Endeavour did not perform a full circle fly around at the station after undocking. Instead, 
The shuttle undocked from the station and performed a quarter circle fly around at the complex at a point about 400 feet directly above the station where it fired its engines on a final separation burn beginning its departure from the orbiting outpost. Uh, but the most incredible view I've ever seen in my life was do doing, uh, during this fly around. And you'll see in a second a picture of the space station, some video of the space station over the Caribbean, and it, it was just incredible. Uh, here you can see, uh, this, this doesn't exactly do it justice, but you can see uh, uh, Florida up here in the top of the, top of the picture and the uh, green Caribbean sea uh, beneath it. This shows the uh, trajectory we flew around the space station, this arc. And uh, right before we uh, separated, we were all the way on the other side of the space station from when we started. We started on the far side here and wound up behind it and then, then did a burn to separate. The day after uh, undocking, we had one final official uh, duty, and that was to deploy a satellite called Starshine, and it was my honor to press the button. Uh, Starshine is uh, about a, it can be thought of as like a disco ball, and its only purpose is to be observed uh, by people on the ground. Uh, the Starshine itself is uh, made up of uh, thousands of mirrors that were polished by students uh, all around the world. Um, so it's encouraging to think of all ages and all nations involved in the space program. Later that day, Endeavour made its deorbit burn and returned to the Kennedy Space Center, landing at runway 15. One of the biggest challenges I thought from the, from the entire mission was uh, taking the uh, a spaceship and getting all reconfigured to come home. You start the day before, and boy, you're on this uh, this timeline uh, from the when you get up on entry day. Here you can see the HUD video in the inset, and at this point we're probably about uh, 85,000 feet at about 270 knots, and we'll be on the ground shortly. Now we fly this heading alignment circle, and then we roll out on final. And I think Dom's words here were something to the effect of good grief because you could see the clouds. We normally don't expect to land uh, flying through clouds, but you can see right here, this is the altitude where it's 7,000 feet and still no runway. 6,000 feet and it's cloudy. So we're getting a little, maybe just a little bit nervous. We break out at 5,500 feet and you can see the, the runway right here at the top of the screen. Uh, at this point, we're doing 300 knots. The orbiter has no thrust, so we're, we're a glider right here. Gear come down at about 300 feet. Actually press the button at 300 feet and they, they're down and locked by about 200. And then we touch down at 200 knots. My daughter Claire was down there for a week. She saw the ascent. She saw everything on TV. But she said this part was her favorite, the parachute coming out. She just loved the parachute. We rolled about 10,000 feet down the runway. The runway at KSC is the longest runway in, well, the longest hard runway in the world, one of them, and it's 15,000 feet, so we had about 5,000 feet left to go. That is the weather airplane flying by. We came to a stop, and then it takes uh, probably a good another hour, hour and a half before you're outside the orbiter, and then you get to change into your flight suits and walk around. You're a little bit wobbly in the beginning, but uh, uh, shortly thereafter, you're doing pretty good. The next shuttle mission would continue building the station adding the S-Zero Truss. 